This is a performance report at the Indianapolis International Airport in Indiana on the GHP 2800 and the Leica Geosystems 3D Control with Burns Construction Company. The GHP 2800 has been chosen for airport concrete paving around the world because it is state of the art built with the latest technology available to meet the strict specifications of runways, taxiways and aprons for aircraft landing, takeoffs and travel. We visited with Dan Keyes, president of Burns Construction. He is also the present chair of the Indiana American Concrete Pavement Association. We're here in Indianapolis, uh, started in business in 1928 and basically we're in the concrete paving business, highways, uh, do some airport work, but uh, we've been primarily concrete pavers, uh, do our own dirt work and drainage work in connection with uh, our highway work. Let's talk a little bit about the project. It's uh, a big project, that's for this sure. This is a big project. It's a complete new terminal and apron for Indianapolis International Airport. and. Uh, I, I guess I think they're going to spend close to a, a billion dollars by the time they get done, but we've got uh, the, all of the new apron and taxiway to connect that apron to our present runways, as well as the entrance roads uh, coming into the airport. So we end up with uh, about uh, over 500,000 square yards of 16-inch uh, uh, apron paving, as well as uh, over 100,000 square yards of uh, roadways coming into the new terminal. So, and all that's placed on, uh, all of our apron will be placed on the concrete. So when you put all that together, you've got over a million square yards to, to pave here. And, and Paver's doing a great job uh, getting, uh, of course, with the, the apron edge slump is a big thing, so we're pouring pretty dry, but uh, the 2800 two-track is, is doing a great job. Uh, the edges, uh, they're doing a, doing a good job. It's uh, about as sharp as edges I've seen. It's pretty much the same mix we're used to working with. This uh, is the late in the year. Of course, we're using 100% uh, cement with no fly ash, which is a, is a little bit different, and it, it can create some workability problems with the lack of ash. but. Uh, by and large, it's, it's coming uh, out the back of the paver in pretty good shape. We asked Dan about the feelings of his paving team with the transition to the new stringless technology. We were somewhat into the GPS system uh, with uh, the motor graders and dozers, and so our people have adjusted very well to uh, adapt it to the Leica system. And, have found it fairly user friendly. Uh, I had the kid uh, Matt with Leica that uh, I, we didn't need him around here right now, as long as we had his phone number. But our, our guys have, uh, have have picked it up real well and, and seem to to like it, and I think they're looking forward to doing some layout work uh, with that system. Did that take a a sales job uh, to get them? to buy into the concept, or were they ready to go? I had a fellow, uh, Tim Hartgrove, that uh, is uh, a guy that uh, is pretty interested in that stuff, so he, he jumped right in and, and really uh, took hold of it pretty fast. We visited with Tim Hartgrove, their project manager. Tim made the stringless system sound boring. Yes. Uh when you undertake any new thing, you know, you, you're apprehensive about things. You don't know whether you're going to be able to grasp the idea and, and so on and so forth. But as with a lot of things, it turns out to be a lot simpler once you've uh, looked at it a little bit more than, than what you thought. So it can't be really too complicated. Basically, you've got northing and easting and elevations, and uh, everything is controlled by that. So it's just how you look at it, one system looks at it, maybe a little bit different, but the, the basic thing is, is when, you, when it's all uh, shook out, it's just northing and easting and elevations. So when you, when you got it, was it uh, about what you thought it would be? Was it as simple as you thought it would be? I think it was simpler. When you look at the basic concept on how you design uh, a 
for paving, basically, uh, it's it's very simple. When you when you show it to something, they when you show it to somebody that really doesn't have what you would think too much of a concept of construction, they go, basic, is that all there is? And I said, that's all there is. Basically, you got points, you're going from one point to another point on each side of the paver, and you've got an elevation for those, and the paver goes from one point to another point, and that's all there is. What always helps when you get a job, whether it be a road job, an airport job, if you can get the electronic files from the designer, 75% of your work's done. Because in those electronic files, as was this one, there's northings, there's eastings, and there's elevation. So basically, we took the design file, the electronic file that we got from the designer, basically brought it up, and through that, we're able to design our model from that. And that also serves another purpose. That also tells you that you're exactly doing what the designer wanted. You're not doing any interpretation. You're basically, you're using the designer's northings, his eastings, and his elevations, which would be your X, Y, and Z coordinates. Basically, we like to show up an hour, 45 minutes ahead of time, uh, get our three tackies, which tackies are what I would call a, a total station robot. They're basically a surveying instrument. Uh, get those three things set up. You use three because the two is always on the paver, guiding the paver, and the third one you use to leapfrog ahead and uh, your as belts in back of the paver. You get your three prisms set up on known points out here, what we call reference points. You go around and get those set up. Uh, you hook your, uh, your computer up to the paver itself. Go ahead and turn it on, let it warm up as you're doing the other things. Um, Basically, you get your prism set up, you sight all three of your, uh, your tackies in, and uh, basically they're ready to go. You go over to the computer, you pick the reference line for that day that you're going to pave off of. It'd be just like string line, you would pick the string line you're going to pave off of, and you give it an offset from that because basically the string line is you're going to offset, for instance, out here we're paving 20 foot, so you would offset. 10 foot to uh, the center of the machine or so on and so forth. So uh, that's all you do and uh, you try to start these cold mornings, you try to start the paver up a little bit ahead of time and try to get the oil a little bit warm too because you want the hydraulic oil, you know, not cold, you want it warm. So, so when you take off, you're in good shape. So we have, uh, I guess, the sixth prism involved here. It's called a mini prism and all it is is a small deal uh, with a small prism in it and you can actually set that prism right down on your concrete give it a prism height which ours is basically two inches uh, so you put that in there and you take a series of shots and those shots are going in the computer of the paver so at the end of the day you put your memory stick which you know a memory stick is basically the same thing you can buy at Best Buy you plug it into the bottom of the computer, you download all your data, your data tells your tolerances, your as builds, and whatever else you've programmed into that computer that you want information later on. I take that data at the end of the day, put it in my laptop computer, make a folder saying October 24th, 25th, whatever, and put all those files in there. So if anybody has any questions later on about what we were doing, I said, here are my as builds. These are the tolerances. These are where our tackies were set up. And this is the station log for the whole day. This is what we got. These are the elevation. This is what the design was. This is actually what we paved right here. Uh, we've had uh, people say that they would just never pull a concrete paver up to an open area without string line <laughs> and start paving away. Well, I was probably one of those people <laughs> at one time. <laughs> been there and done that. Is it, was it a little scary the first time you did it? Yes, it was. It was scary. Um, you are out here in the middle of it, uh, any, you know, nowhere and trying to pick it. But one thing about it is when you pick your reference lines in the morning, your computer is going to tell you basically, you know, you're going to come out here ahead of time and you're going to have some idea where this pavement's going to go. And you're going to pull your paver up there 
and you're going to pull, pick a reference line, and your computer on your with your Leica system on your paver is going to say, oh, "You're off 200 feet, pal. You're in the wrong, you, you know, you're in the wrong reference line." And you scratch your head a little bit, and, and anyway, through. But you you get better at it. I mean, the first the first week, you know, we we were nervous. Uh, we didn't know what what you know what was going to happen, so on and so forth. But we've been doing it three or four weeks now. And tell you the truth, it's kind of boring. Young people grasp the concept a lot, a lot more effectively than some of us older guys. Our paving superintendent, though, so is probably the same age as I am, or a little bit older. He was dead set against it. He just didn't see how it was going to work. There was no way. There was no way this would work. So, basically. He's happy right now, which makes me happy, which makes everybody around him happy. So, <laughs> so that yes, uh, like, like I said earlier, basically when you see something like this, you're going to say, oh, you're going to have to be a rocket scientist to be able to just figure this thing out. Well, it can't be too much simpler than what it is. Um, like I said, basically it's just a bunch of points, and you're going from one point to another, it's just just like you would put up string line. What's going on on, on the computer screen on the paper? There's a series of computer screens. You can toggle from one to the other. You can see where the paver is, uh, the front of the paver and the rear of the paver in relationship to the actual design. You can see your cross slope, how it's varying a little bit from the actual design. Um, so on and so forth. You can go, basically you can learn anything you want to about what's going on with the paver. It can give you, it's giving you your feet per minute uh, basically, it's giving your stationing, uh, so on and so forth. It's, it's giving you how far you are away from your uh, your control tackies, all that sort of stuff. You can toggle from one screen to another and not disrupt the flow of the design at all. And uh, the guy could come around there and look and see exactly what's happening uh, with the paver at any time. Matt Morrison was the Leica Geosystems representative on the project. Matt said that the interface with the Gomeco G21 controller on the GHP 2800 paver is not complicated. Uh, it's not. Uh, using Gomeco's technology with the electric over hydraulic, uh, we, inter uh, we interface pretty much seamless with that. Uh, as the communication goes through the CAN bus system to the G21 control box, it makes us basically uh, an easy install. Uh, we don't have to go in and uh, do open heart surgery on the machine. There's no installation of uh, valves or hydraulic flow kits or anything like that. Uh, basically, we can utilize the CAN bus systems and the electrical messages sent out to the servo valves through the Gomeco G21 controller and control the entire machine for grade and steer. What does that mean? Does it, can you just plug it in? Uh, yes, it's a plug and play system. This has been a performance report at the Indianapolis International Airport on stringless technology with the Gomeco GHP 2800 slip form paver. Gomeco, the worldwide leader in concrete paving technology.